Good morning. Uh, thanks for the for the introduction. My name is Paolo. Uh, we did uh, the city group I'm part of. We are called Curtis Moravia. We are from Czech Republic, and we did this educational art using experiences uh, to show some stuff that bothers us personally. I will go more on that later. This this presentation will be divided in <coughs> three sections. In the first one, I would like to uh, introduce the, the, the project so you will at least to uh, some point know what I'm talking about when I'm going to the next section that would be the faders and the next one which would be the, the educational part and workshops that <coughs> we use the conference system. Uh, the first thing would, uh, is probably necessary to understand that I think that LARP writing is more or less a design and we uh, think about what we do. We don't, don't just like feel or, or yeah, let's put this in. We, we like have reasons to do that. And so I would like to show you some whys and hows that we uh, did on the project system. Uh, the game is for 40 players uh, supported by the cast of the NPCs. Uh, it lasts for more or less one weekend and it's on single detached locations so we are not uh, bothered by the public and uh, vice versa. Uh, we have a lecture, a uh, workshop uh, before the game so the players mm, are, are taught how to take the most of it and also workshop after the game where the most of the, uh, the briefing and, and cultivating the, the experiences the players had in the game happens. Now, some pictures with mostly no comments, so you can, you know, like, have some images in your head while I'm gonna continue to talk. We rented a recreational complex, not uh, unsimilar to this one. It just looks a bit better and the food might, might, might be more mm, socialistic, but more or less the same. The, people, the game uh, lasts for 24 hours, there's one night of sleep included, it's a good <coughs> game. The people part in game, the people <coughs> find each other in game, there are public events and citizen groups, trial, and uh, final ritual. So uh, now to our motivations, because as I said before, this is an educational art. Uh, we had some reasons to do that, uh, very personal. Uh, when I'm talking about we, I'm talking about like eight people who made this, this LARP going. Uh, well, uh, as you probably know, uh, Czech Republic was, was part of the Soviet Union. Uh, we are kind of bothered that uh, our general public doesn't really care uh, what was it like and uh, that maybe some totalitarian regime could more or less return to our country if we are not well informed about that. And also uh, election attendance was lowering and we kind of want to <coughs> do our little part in some way we uh, can do a thing in. It was obviously a lot. So project systems shows how common lives of people in some fictional but very believable totalitarian regime could look like. So the people, uh, the participants I mean, could make up their own minds uh, about that. And it was our utmost goal. Yeah. So the project system is therefore open for everyone and is designed according to this. And Please uh, note this is a big game, it took uh, quite a long time to prepare it uh, and not every game must be and even should be like that. You can easily make very, very influential educational LARPs uh, in much smaller formats. So uh, as, I, as I told you before, this is a totalitarian regime that's inspired by some selected uh, real ones but it's fictional, it's made up. Uh, the system in the main, like the project system, is the, the regime, the, the government, and it uses class society. 
the characters are therefore typical citizens, like like average people. Uh, we simulate uh, or simulate. We, we are telling the players that the uh, town where the where the um, story took place is like 400 people, but we focus on much smaller group of the 40 interesting, and we just don't care about the rest. And of course, we set the characters so there are many, many, many conflicts between them, so certain things show up during the game. Uh, this is the yeah, common people of the lower class, a uh, common life of the lower class. Uh, we designed a main plot involving most of the characters, so we can guarantee certain experience for all the players. Yeah, I should have a video right here. This is a the classmates and he, he just grabbed the, the voting poster and, and uh, just like wrapped, wrapped it and threw it at him. So and, and that kind kind of stuff doesn't go very very lightly with the system. So he was uh, like instantly uh, under pressure uh, of it. Uh, as I said uh, at the start, uh, we sh uh, you incorporate personal experience and we, we uh, draw most of the educational material from that. And for that, we use drama. Uh, we create drama-friendly environment, setting plots using pressure, uh, developing both plots, and thinking about uh, how the drama curve should raise and, and lower. Uh, the players are prepared to to uh, play a game like that during the pre-game workshop, so they know what to do. Uh, the drama is not always escalating. Uh, if you do uh, some, something like a dramatical curve, Please do not escalate it all the time uh, if the time frame allows it because people need uh, the time to breathe. <coughs> they do. Uh, you can then escalate it uh, from some lower point, uh, which is easily uh, easier manage manageable. Uh, the game is prescripted. It's a railroad, <coughs> as uh, the word Yana used in the workshop yesterday, and probably more people. It means we uh, really design many of stuff that happens there. The people have uh, some, some free will, but we want to guarantee some events to happen, so we, we push the characters into them by, by prescripting them, uh, either using NPCs or, uh, or their, uh, the, the character motivations. Yeah, this, uh, this kind of railroading that we use is concealed. We, we do it very subtle. So, so the, Players are not bothered that they are pushed into something they don't want to do, and also the storyline is quite quite catchy. So they don't feel they need to explore the boundaries and the margins of the larp. They just go with the flow, uh, and so they can even end up in a trial doing so. Yeah. 
the environment is more or less 360 degrees. It means everything's real, everything's in game, except for some some uh, parts like like out game organizer, organizers that are watching the game. Uh, we use civilizations and uniformity, like uniforms or sub certain uh, marks. For instance, the, the sign of the state. It's on, on every important document. It's a form of communication that what are you looking for uh, at is important. Uh, yeah, we build up. We we used uh, or or convinced uh, a professional scenographer that she uh, is willing to help us for free, which is always great. And she helped us to design uh, or adjust the space uh, so it will build up more more uh, atmosphere. And we also use a lot of music and sounds. There was a public uh, addressment system in the camp, so we we played some music. In it, and there was, uh, for instance, uh, Ill illegal radio that was that was uh, possible to tune up in in in-game radios. So, uh, any questions so far? <coughs> For brief introduction, this should be enough. Uh, now, uh, I'm really uh, excited about the about the fader model. I think uh, if it had existed when we designed the game, we would probably uh, use it. <laughs> and therefore, I uh, decided that I should uh, try to map project system uh, to those faders, and so I did. This is the first one. Uh, just a brief explanation. I think it should be quite obvious, but the the uh, thing there in, in the middle that's the fader, right? And uh, I have put the, the labels on it so uh, you can you don't have to remember it or look in your papers in the case you forgot already uh, what they are. Yeah, uh, we uh, as, as crew of Moravia and all the organizers of the project system, we don't really uh, like do much physical games in in uh, like fighting wise. So uh, we create personal drama. Uh, we let people interact verbally and non-verbally, but no, no fighting. Uh, on the other hand, we uh, like to get physical in other means, like like using props, real real things that you can touch, real spaces that you can be into, uh, go into. Because uh, for inexperienced players, that might be the thing that uh, kind of lowers the threshold of, of uh, accessibility. To make the game more open, so you don't have to like think about what is this because that is what it is. That, that's why we chose to do this. It's this, yeah. Representation, yeah. Uh, I briefly talk about it uh, just as now. We are much more for realism, definitely in this game. Uh, the illusion uh, aims to be complete. Like you, you don't really uh, except for the. Tiny exceptions I've talked uh, about previously. You don't have to think about <coughs> anything. Like like that's not diegetic, not in game. Uh, yeah. Uh, when I said the uh, totalitarian <coughs> regime is fictional, uh, we that is of course true, but we want it to be believable. And also, realism isn't a goal. It's the tool we use to to. Don't make people think about the stuff we don't uh, need them to be bothered with, like the the environment, because they are here to learn about totality. Yes. So why isn't it higher up on the realism? Um, yeah, because. Uh, ooh, what what fireball. what removes it from being maximum? Yeah, because um, we use some stylizations <coughs> and some meta to to some point. So I I think, uh, yeah, uh, I think this is too detailed, uh, maybe, but. Uh, well, maybe I should put it more to the left, but uh, it wouldn't be the truth. But this is now just, <coughs> just uh, confusing you, so I'm sorry, but let's see oh, what the heck, yeah. Uh, yeah, like, you know, there sh could be like, like uh, a figure, but there is a real person, so we are very realistic. The scenography, uh, as I I talked about that briefly uh, just just now, so uh, let's skip to the, to the next part. For me, this is really connected with the, repre the representation fader anyway. Uh, here you can see uh, parts of the area we used and costumes maybe, so we can get some idea. Uh, openness, 
Yeah, uh, the game is not very open. Uh, the plot twists and, and personal secrets that show up eventually uh, are important part of the game. Uh, that uh, creates creates some surprises, some some uh, some interesting paths to follow, and uh, of course it creates more drama. And it also uh, can be used to to uh, create much more interesting plots between the characters. Uh, of course, uh, the, all the secrets are very uh, heavily pressed to be shown up eventually, because otherwise it just, just doesn't make any sense to put them in. Uh, so uh, every secret, if you design a game like that, if, if you give a secret to somebody, you should give it also to somebody else. Which in a regime like this is, is very simple. Uh, if you remember the, the watching lady in the video, it's, it's like that. You, somebody did something and some lady's seen it and you have a secret uh, in the open eventually. <coughs> yeah, like this, she, she learns something new from the latter. Uh, character creation responsibility. In project system, we pre-design much of the characters and much of the plot lines. Uh, so they will be more, uh, more dramatic, more engaging, and uh, so we can guarantee something interesting and, and heavy or, or uh, like like experience information that it happens. Uh, this isn't of course good for every game. It was definitely good for project system. Mm, yeah. Uh, player motivation is is totally collaborative because there is no no means to excel amongst the other players. There are of course means to excel among uh, other characters, but that's that's just a plot. And uh, the players their their ultimate goal is to to learn something from the game or, or have fun uh, playing it and, and have some experience from it. So uh, they uh, collaborate doing so because th there is no winners, even the, the guys on the floor and he is, isn't even that. So uh, yeah, uh, meta techniques. Uh, as I said in the at the start, uh, we want the game to be as open as possible. So we chose to be quite subtle about uh, in, in using meta techniques. That was the, the main goal, actually. Uh, this is in-game video. Why is it meta technique? Meta technique, in a sense, is that this video will never play in, in the in-game, uh, but it shows some interesting uh, thoughts that are good for the characters to hear and to talk about later on. Uh, the sto storyline is, uh, yeah. The, this maybe requires some explanation. Uh, I said that uh, we are really focused on playability, as you probably expect. Also, I said we want the, the regime and the, and the environment and the story to be believable. But still, the playability is the utmost goal. Uh, so uh, we, we really don't focus on how realistic it is, but how good is, it is for the game, and uh, <coughs> always having the goals of the game in mind. Yeah, uh, and also I think it's really good to have a storyline because all the great books, all the great movies have a story. All of them have interesting settings, environments, uh, and stuff like that, but also the story is uh, for many players the thing to remember. Next one. Yeah, uh, this is an example, quite nice example of the, of the playability because the, the players could express some thoughts uh, in the game while painting these posters, but if the, if, uh, the game was very plausible, some of them would never hang. And they did, in, anyway, because they showed some uh, quite clever criticism of the regime and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, Game Master style, uh, hand, hand uh, in hand with the, with the uh, scripting mm -hmm. and, and the railroading goes some game mastering, in my opinion. Uh, we used agents, which are, which were NPCs that were so so concealed that uh, the players even didn't know they were not the players, uh, because uh, the the uh, guys that played those NPCs participated in the pre-game workshop. They they uh, um, arrived to the game with the backpacks like everybody else. So so to, to the players they seemed like regular regular other players. And this is, uh, yeah, and those agents, of course, reported to us. They were heavily instructed and, and you know, before and during the game, so they helped it flow, flow in the direction we wanted it to. Uh, we suggested some decisions to some characters, like in, in their printed materials, so they knew how to, 
how they should react in certain situations. And also the Game Masters watched the game wearing orange shirts. That was, I think, the only most obvious meta technique uh, that the players were instructed to ignore everybody who's wearing orange shirts so the organizers can walk among them and, and watch what's happening. Bleeding, yeah. We wanted uh, to, uh, the game to be real, to be believable, and to be really uh, easily digestible by the players. And so we, we uh, choose to use some resemblances to our country, to our previous regime, to the, to the Soviet Union, uh, and so on. But on the other hand, uh, we didn't want the players to play characters that are similar to them, that would be uh, too dangerous. Uh, in, in our opinion. And again, a uh, project system uh, for the world that, uh, that's in the system is made of fiction. Uh, yeah, this is a tricky one. Uh, we put, of course, all the pressure in game on the characters, but uh, we wanted also the players to experience something. This is, this is the tricky part. So I think it's right in the middle because through the characters, we put some little pressure on the, or maybe not so little, uh, even on the char characters. Uh, because then, when the post-game workshop took place, they had lots of material to talk about. Like, not only this happened to my character, but I felt something while this happened to my character. And th that was crucial for us. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but for the physical comfort, we feed our players regularly, and there is off-game rule and off-game space where the people should can go if they are too tired by the game, and uh, there is a psych psychologist on the spot, and we we uh, use it not necessarily like like uh, the people can go to him and if they feel somehow uncomfortable, and they sometimes do. It's uh, uh, nothing serious happened so far. I think we had like six repetition of the project so far. But it's a definitely a good thing in a game like this. And our last failure is, of course, education. Uh, we wanted, yeah, we wanted the people to think, not not having really funny fun. So uh, it's all the way to the left. And this is the, one of the pictures of the post-game workshops when when we at the start discussed uh, some of the stuff that happened. I'm going to skip or, or go very briefly through this part, uh, the toolbox, the things we used. You can maybe take some notes of that or, or don't, uh, whatever. Uh, we used repression. I mean, like, the, the state put some pressure on the characters. Uh, this is very strong. It creates a fear of many things. And it's definitely the first thing to, to uh, think about if you are creating a game like this. Also, every character had a job, a routine uh, for all the, all the play, players, like this. This is every morning, the only oh, morning okay. in the game, but every morning in, in, in the world, uh, in the state. And during th those jobs, uh, of course, many interesting stuff happened. So it's not like, let's, let's glue some stamps now for like three hours, but let's glue some stamps while having interesting discussions and, and plot some plots. Yeah. Uh, we use three classes. The students, uh, the laborers, the lowest class, and the full grown-up citizens. Uh, they were very different uh, in their rights. The laborers were, were most, more or less like slaves. They were uh, trying to be the citizens. They were, they were like refugees from other countries, trying to uh, get in the system, because the system was, uh, compared to, the, uh, to its neighbors, relatively good place or uh, at least the system uh, was making sure it uh, seems so. Yeah. And uh, the interesting thing is you were not supposed to talk to them uh, as a citizen or a student. Uh, well, this, that's why the, the uniforms and they, uh, in a sense, became invisible. And uh, therefore they could uh, hear some interesting talks while they are swiping floors and stuff like that. Yeah, uh, I've already talked about that we used scripting and railroad. Uh, we uh, used pressure, and I've talked about it in the failure. Uh, this is this is so we uh, can guarantee, or we wanted to guarantee that every every player gets some level of personal attention. 
using the main plot or the or the side plot. <coughs> yeah, and also as I said, the characters were set so there are many conflicts to them, so they press on, on each other. Yeah, that's like like like, like that. <laughs> yeah, I, I've already talked about agent. They are just for the reminder. It's definitely a useful tool. Uh, well, there are I think three agents in this room, so you can get the idea. Uh, yeah, the plot layers. Uh, we use, uh, th this is an interesting thing. Uh, if you do, do design a big game like this, you can like write a lot of stuff, or you can use some tools to make it easier. Uh, that could be like like layers of story. Uh, you have you create one big story and several others, uh, and if one of, uh, if some character fails to uh, get catched in one of those plots, they are al always the others. So uh, he is not uh, bored during the game. And also, you can use uh, the agents to to recognize this kind of stuff and try to put the characters back back in game. There is no called starting because you can't fail to eat your dinner. Uh, the pre-game workshops, yeah. Uh, as I said before, uh, we teach the players how we think that the game should be played to make the most of it. And we tell them some setting great effects and they get uh, to know each other, their characters and the characters of the other players. And yeah. The educational uh, part uh, to make an opening for the for the really clever guys that are going to uh, go up here uh, right after me. Uh, I said that project system is an educational art, and the most of the stuff uh, or the idea was let's play a game, let's have a strong game, let's have some experiences, and then cultivate and distill them uh, into some thoughts uh, afterwards. So uh, we had like a half day after the game uh, of workshop. Uh, the game ended Saturday night. Uh, there was brief debrief. Uh, then there was a, a, a party because yeah, that's a good thing after a game like that. And uh, the next morning we started to game uh, to do these big workshops uh, where the people could communicate what they experience it, uh, experience and new thoughts as as they discuss it pop up. <laughs> Of course. Yeah, uh, we use some some tools uh, like like uh, to revive to em the emotions the people experience during the game to make them uh, a little bit alive uh, in in a sense. Then uh, we used methods to transpose uh, such experience. For for instance, uh, that that already happened I think in, in one of the games, like like. Uh, People stand there if you feel like the regime is good, and stand there if you feel it's, it's bad, and, and then you can see how the people spread up and, and uh, stuff like that. And also, they, they created art like, like poems that that could could be created in like in game, but they, they were doing it collectively. Uh, quite quite nice uh, things pop up eventually, and. In the end, we rationalized the experience. Uh, we, we took the art, uh, we mm, took, took the, the workshops, the, the visual stuff that happened uh, during them, and uh, talked about them some more. Uh, the, the most important thing uh, for us, definitely, and maybe for this lecture, is that we decided we can teach, in a sense, uh, not being a teachers, uh, because there was a stuff uh, we wanted to uh, talk about, uh, we wanted to share with uh, people in some sense. And we do LARP, so we do LARP about stuff that was interesting and, and bothering us. And you can do so. Uh, this means... Uh, what this means? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. I, I've talked about it in, in the beginning. Uh, there is some situation in the Czech Republic, and we wanted to, to uh, from at least a part, change it. Uh, the good thing is the we, we succeeded a lot. Uh, the players were always very excited. Uh, they talk about us. They they recommend the game to their friends. They support us on social networks. So this this part that we want to achieve kind of. Happened, uh, went out really nicely. 
And this is really it. If you want more, try to. Uh, this is very complicated, yet in English translation existing uh, website. Or ask anybody from the Czech guys, uh, because we all been to the game. Yeah. Any questions? Yeah, sure. Uh, to the pre-game workshops. It was for the first time I realized that when you are doing something during the pre-game workshops, it's... Well, um, we got to get to know other characters as well, and know, like who is playing whom. And since we were already divided in the groups when, in my run of the game, we were already divided in the groups when this was happening. So I was playing as students, and all the students basically knew each other after like half an hour or something. But then I realized when I went into, into the game that I had no clue who are the, who the, 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 the normal citizens actually are. I knew that this should be my father. And that was pretty much it. And sometimes it was... Yeah, this, this actually got, got better a lot uh, in, in the next, next uh, runs, but thanks for the comment. Yeah, and uh, as I said, the people were kind of excited afterwards, so this is like the, the, um, uh, the proof. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you.